All right, so hi, I'm Morris Rosenthal for phonerbooks.com, and I'm upgrading the memory on my U205 notebook here. And you start by getting out this top uh, cover that hides the screws for the keyboard. There are two little slots for prying with your screwdriver, and after that, if you just sort of pull it forward towards the keyboard, it comes right out. Then we have two keyboard screws, so I'm using a small electronic screwdriver. Going after these screws here, there's one. There's two, and I can usually do this pretty quickly, even though I have shaky hands. All right, we lift up the keyboard. I'm not going to bother undoing the connector and taking it out. In fact, I'll just prop it over there with my camera that I'm not using at the moment. And we'll come and we'll take out the screws and the cover for the RAM here. I'll maybe pick that up a little more so you can see. All right, there's one screw. And here's the other screw. All right, they're very short screws. They don't take much effort to go out. We've removed the cover. So there you have the two memory modules exposed. Now, they normally pop right out without any prime when you release these. Yep, there we go. Comes right up and out. So that's one, and I'm going to stop right here and put in the new one as I go along. The originals were uh, 512 megabytes, so two of them gave us a gigabyte, and I'm replacing them with these crucial modules, which are two gigabytes each, which the notebook is supposed to register. And you can see the notch here. The notch is used for aligning, and you can see the notch in the module slot. So all that we should need to do is insert that in there, make sure it's in good, and then press it down and click. There it goes in. And we'll try the one on the other side. Pop! Comes right up. Out. Let's get our crucial replacement module here. I suppose I could have pre-staged these, but that's the real taking it out of the package. There you go. Make sure the slot is lined up. It's on the same side, meaning you see the other side of the module. Come on. There we go. Worked in there nicely. A little further perhaps. No. Well, sometimes you get into a situation where you just don't want to quite sit in nicely. But the, it looks pretty good to me. I'll compare it to the one that we have. So you can tell this is completely unstaged. Yes, the size is the same, so that should go. It's just a question of getting it lined up just right. We'll try again there. There you go. It, it helps to start at a higher angle, about a 25, 30 degree angle, and then to press down. I expect I was going in a little too flat there. So click, in and good. And we'll put our cover back on. All right two screws. I feel like Dr. Seuss here with thing number one and thing number two. I have screw number one. Come on, you're making me look bad, screw number one. There we go. And screw number two. Come on, huh. Screw number two has decided to make me look bad as well. These are all the same thread, I believe, but I'll double check for as good as my eyes are not. Oh, what do you know? So the screws holding the keyboard shield were actually a fine thread, and these are a coarser thread. So I was putting a fine thread screw in a coarse thread hole. It's kind of amusing. I thought these were identical. So there we go. And that's how you know you're watching a real presentation rather than something staged. All right, so keyboard flops back down. We'll drop in these two fine thread screws. And there's no universal approaches here on screw types, etc. All manufacturers do things differently. 
All right, that screw is all tightened up and in. And here we go. Now, I could put the cover back on, but that's really a silly thing to do before testing it to make sure that it works. So all I'm going to do here is close it up, put my battery back in because I removed my battery in order to work on the laptop. You should always remove your battery before doing any sort of laptop work. Come on, you should at least for one fall right into place. That's being so stubborn. All right. Got a good view of a lottery ticket there. We'll fire it up and see what we get. You can see a live screen. Always a good thing. Asking me for my fingerprint. And I don't know whether or not I want to keep recording all the way through boot. But we see Windows coming up. I suppose I can turn this a little more. D D D D D D D D D D D. Windows coming up. And we'll find out in a minute if XP has registered the memory. Of course, it could be a long minute, and I suppose while it's happening, since I know that the computer did in fact boot, I'll replace this. It had the notches towards the top, so that's the bit that we know for sure. Mm. See, the problem with pressing down is I don't want to be hitting straight keys here with my fat fingers, so I'll just let it sit there for a minute, for a moment. All right, and let's steer over here. Where is my computer? View system information. Didn't know you were getting singing involved. And there you go, it is registering 3.24 gigabytes of, man, of RAM, which of course is actually 4 gigabytes of RAM minus the old 640 plus. So I would call this a successful upgrade. Morse Rosenthal for Phoner Books and visit our website for laptop troubleshooting.